Hey everybody, I'm Eddie from Eddie at Large, and in today's video, we've got the original Mopika wireless propane sensor and the new Mopika Pro sensor, which we'll be putting head to head in some real world tests so we can determine just how accurate they are. We'll also review the differences between the two sensors, give you a few tips on the Bluetooth phone app, and give you our personal recommendation on whether or not it's gonna be worth it for you to upgrade to the Pro version if you've already got the original Mopika sensor. All right, so now just as a disclaimer, after Mopika had seen our Mopika ProCheck water tank sensor video that we did about a year ago, they sent us the new Pro version propane sensors at no charge for us to review. Now we are not being compensated and we are not affiliated with Mopika in any other way. So everything that we're gonna share with you today will be completely unbiased. We've been full-time RVing for about the past three and a half years and we've owned and used the original Mopika propane sensor for that entire time, but we've never tested it for accuracy. So as far as we could tell, it's really always worked well for us and has seemed to be pretty much spot on. That being said, the only way to determine if the sensor is accurate is to weigh the tank with the propane in it and then do some calculations to find the actual percentage based on weight. So for this test, we took multiple readings over several weeks as we used up the propane in our tanks all while comparing the readings for both the old and the new sensor. To do this test, we'll need to know a few constants. The first thing we need to know is how much our empty propane tanks weigh. That's actually pretty easy. The factory stamps this weight on each cylinder's collar. This is called the tear weight and it's abbreviated by TW. Our tank has a tear weight or empty weight of 23.1 pounds. The second constant we'll need to know is how much liquid propane our tank can hold. And in our case, we have 30 pound tanks, which means that each tank holds 30 pounds of liquid propane inside when filled to the maximum level. Now that we have these numbers, we can determine the percentage of propane in the tank by weighing the tank with the propane in it, then subtracting the tear or empty weight, and finally dividing that result by 30. If that sounds confusing, don't worry. I'll break it down again when we crunch the numbers and it'll all make sense. Just to clarify, when we say the tank is completely full, it really technically isn't. So in its pressurized state, a full propane tank has about 80% liquid propane on the bottom and the top 20% is gas propane that gets used by your RV appliances each time you turn them on. So now you may be wondering how this liquid and gas mixture works. Well, propane has a boiling point of minus 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, I said minus 44 degrees. Whenever a liquid boils, you just naturally think that it's hot, but this liquid can't be hot. It's sitting on a cake of ice boiling on ice and vaporizing, producing a gas that burns. So that's kind of crazy, right? Well, as the propane is extracted from the tank, the liquid propane inside actually starts to boil and vaporizes, thereby replacing the used propane gas from the top. And it continues in this manner until the tank is completely empty. Our 30 pound propane tanks are considered completely full when they have approximately 30 pounds or about seven gallons of liquid propane inside each tank. And the Mopika sensor detects only the liquid inside the tank from the bottom up and is calibrated so that whenever the liquid is reading 15 inches of liquid propane in the tank, it will show the level to be 100%. Before we begin the test, let's review the differences and improvements from the original Mopika sensor to the new Pro sensor. You can see here that the original sensor has a rectangular design and it's rounded off on one end where the sensor is located and the Pro sensor is perfectly round. Well, I really like this new circular design because the way the old sensor is designed, whenever it gets placed on the bottom of the tank, the sensor is centered on the bottom and it leaves this long end exposed. And if you have an open compartment like we do for our propane tanks, air can rush up under there into the bottom of the tank area and that could potentially push this sensor off center or potentially blow it completely off the tank. Now we've never had that happen because I actually taped this to the bottom of the tank. The round design here it takes care of this issue. It sits perfectly centered and held tight to the tank. So I really like that. Another major improvement is the ability to change the update rate via the Bluetooth app, which allows you to max out the rate to 30 seconds. The old sensor only maxed out at 10 and a half seconds and to change it, you had to manually hold down this sync button. 
where it where is it there it is <laughs> for five seconds to toggle between options this update rate is really key in preserving the battery life of the sensor with the pro sensor all settings are changed with the phone app including the ability to update the firmware which from what i could tell there wasn't any way to update the firmware on the original sensor the pro also has the ability to read the sensor temperature and levelness and lastly per mopika they have improved the ultrasonic reading and accuracy, which we're going to be testing in just a few minutes. The Mopika app is intuitive and really quite simple to use. Up top, you can see the battery life, sensor quality, and Bluetooth status. The sensor three-star quality status will alert you to any issues there may be with the sensor's ability to read the propane level properly. Potential causes may be dirt or debris between the tank and the sensor the sensor not being properly centered and level on the bottom of the tank or an insufficient amount of Mopika sonic grease. Per Mopika, two stars or more is a normal quality reading. However, if there is one star or less, you're gonna to need to take action to determine the cause of the poor reading. The Pro Sensor is also said to have improved battery life and Mopika states that even with an update rate of every three seconds, the battery should last for up to two years. We recommend keeping the update rate set at 30 seconds. If you leave the app open at all times, you can set a customized alert to let you know when the tank reaches a low point threshold. However, if you close out the app, you won't be able to receive any notifications. This was the only major complaint that we had about the original Mopika sensor where the battery would only last us for about two months unless we closed out the app. So leaving the app closed though, the old sensor batteries would last about six months, but then we didn't get any alerts or notifications. Now, as I mentioned, we did install the Mopika ProCheck water tank sensor almost a year ago, and that battery life is still showing completely full. However, being that we always close out the app in order to conserve battery life after we check the readings, we really can't confirm Mopika's two year battery life claim. Now that we have the pro version though for both propane and water, we're always going to leave the app open in order to receive alerts and we'll be able to post updates for you to let you know how that's working out for us. All right guys, well that's it for that. Let's move on to the testing. I think you can clearly see that we have moved locations. We are now out of the desert and we are camped out here in the Sequoia National Forest near Lake Isabella, California. And we've spent the past two weeks slowly using up the propane in our tank, all the while meticulously monitoring the app, weighing the tank and recording all the data. I've also put this handy spreadsheet together to not only track, but to also automatically calculate the results. We actually had started the testing in our previous location. However, I noticed that the level that's shown in inches in the Mopika app was not matching up to the app's percentage levels when I converted the inches into a percentage. When the propane tank is filled to its capacity and is reading 100% in the app, the Mopika app will also show that there is 15 inches of liquid propane in the tank. So to convert the inches to a percentage, we'll simply take the current inch reading on the app, 9.3 inches. Then we'll divide by 15 inches and the result is 62%. As you can see, the app percentage of 58% varies from the inch conversion of 62% by a difference of 4%. It will actually vary in every case and the way the app algorithm is set up, the variance gets larger as the tank level gets lower as you can see where I've tracked this in the spreadsheet. So this had occurred with the Pro Sensor app readings as well and it made me wonder not only why we had this variance but also which would be more accurate when we put the numbers up against the actual weight base percentage. So all that being said, Keep watching because I think you'll be surprised by the results. Let's take a quick moment to show you how the sensor is installed. Here you can see the two magnets on the bottom of the sensor that are used to hold it to the tank. The sensor is in the center just underneath this rubber covering that protects it from damage. We'll need to add a pea-sized dab of Mopika Sonic grease to allow the sensor to have good contact with the tank for the ultrasonic reading. Then it gets placed right in the center at the bottom of the tank. Now we'll open up the Mopika app, hold down the sync button for about five seconds, and the sensor will connect. It's really that easy. And here's another cool pro tool in the app that shows if the sensor is level or not. As you can see, the tank is completely level and the pro sensor app is also showing level. To do the weigh-ins, we used our trusty old digital bathroom scale here, and to be sure it was accurate, we placed a 50-pound dumbbell on the scale before each and every test just to confirm. 
And to verify the propane cylinder's factory tear weight, after we ran all the propane out of the tank, we put it on the scale and lo and behold, it did weigh in right at 23 pounds versus the 23.1 pounds that is stamped on the tank. I'd say that's pretty accurate. We also made certain that the tank base and the tank were both level when setting up to take each reading. I think I mentioned before that I would give you an example of how we would calculate the percentage based on the tank weight, so here we go. The app reading for the Pro Sensor is showing 60%. We'll weigh the tank and it comes in at 41.6 pounds. We'll take that total weight of the tank and the propane, subtract the tear weight or empty weight of 23.1 pounds, then we'll divide that result of 18 and a half pounds by 30 pounds or the weight of the liquid in a full tank. And this will give us the percentage based on weight, which is 61.7%. Fortunately, this is the last time that we'll have to look at this as our spreadsheet is set up to calculate all of this for us. So let's move on to the results. We started our testing on March 31st and ended on April 16th, taking in 11 data points. This column shows the actual weight of both the propane and the tank at the time of each test. You can see we started with almost a full tank and then ended with the empty weight of 23 pounds. The next column uses a formula to calculate the percentages based on weight, and this gives us the true percentage of the propane in the tank. Column D lists all of the percentages for the original Mopeka sensor that we took from the app. Column E is the percentage based on height that is calculated by taking the original sensor's height in inches and dividing it by 15, as we had previously explained. Column F is the variance between the original sensor height percentage to the original sensor percentage from the app so that we can easily see the difference between the two. This is all replicated in columns G, H, and I for the Pro Sensor. And now on to the final results. Column K shows the original percentage from the app versus the actual weight-based percentage. You can see the app was always reading lower than the actual weight base percentage and as the tank levels decreased, the variance increased with the highest being a 7% negative variance. The overall average variance came in at 4.2%. The next column shows the variance of the original sensor height percentage versus the actual weight base percentage and this actually did very well. The highest variance we saw in this column was 3.7% and the overall average was only 0.9%. Next, we have the Pro version app percentage versus the weight base percentage with the lowest variance of 0% and the highest of 5.7%. The overall average came in at 2%. Lastly, we have the Pro version height base percentage versus the actual weight base percentage, which maxed out at 4.3% and had an overall average of 2.8%. All right, well, regarding accuracy, the original sensor's height base percentage is the clear winner here, however, the original sensor's app base percentage is the clear loser. And it's apparent that the Pro Sensor has made significant improvements over the original with its accuracy and consistency in percentage versus weight category. The one thing that really stood out to me was that the original and the Pro Sensor app percentages were both consistently lower than the actual weight base percentage, meaning the sensor percentage is always telling me that there is less propane in the tank than what I actually have in the tank. And this is actually a good thing, is I would prefer for any deviation to be off in the direction where the sensor is telling me I have less propane in the tank than what's actually in the tank, therefore leaving me time to get the tank refilled before I run out. Looking at the level in inches for both original and pro, the app was mostly showing that there was more propane in the tank than there actually was based on the weight. This was especially true with the Pro Sensor inch level readings, as you can see here, with all the data points showing a positive variance. We'll be sharing these results with Mopeka, so hopefully this can be corrected in a future firmware update. So in the meantime though, I would recommend always using the Mopeka app's percentage setting. That way you should never run out of propane before being alerted by the app. All right, so here's the big question. Should you upgrade to the Mopeka Pro version sensor if you already have the original? I personally would say yes, the Mopeka Pro has made such a huge improvement on the battery life that it would be worth it for us to upgrade. We've changed out quite a lot of batteries on the sensors over the past few years, and I'm really looking forward to being able to leave that app open at all times so that I can get alerts anytime the tank levels get low. Plus the other features in the app that come with the Pro are pretty nice to have on hand. And again, I really like that round design. And finally, the consistency of the sensor readings has improved from the original to the Pro as we have shown in our test results. So 
If you don't have either one of these sensors, I would recommend that you pick up one because it's really just so convenient to be able to pick up your phone and check the app and know exactly how much propane you have in your tank. So I'll put links to both sensors in the description and the comment section below. All right, well, if you're not subscribed and you'd like to see more content from our channel like this video, hit that button below along with the notification bell to ensure you get notified each and every time we put out another video. Also, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below with any questions or comments that you might have. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.